All right, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Sukh Beitza Daf Chav Beis, Beitza number 22. Um, Shmuel uh, still doing Nanuim. He's been doing Nanuim for an hour, and I'm joking. Uh, I couldn't find Shmuel today. Yehuda doesn't want to do with me. He's learning Hilkos Chag Bechag. Okay, I am Gemara in Megillah. It says he's supposed to learn the halachas of Sukkah on Sukkah. The truth is, Sechus Beitzas talks about Yom Tov. So, when Sechus Beitzas on Yom Tov, you're probably also Yodze Hilkos Chag Bechag. Secret, most people don't know about it, but it probably is. That's my chiddush for today. He with Ben Sion. All right, we'll start from the top of Daf Chav Bezim and Aleph. Um, trying to figure out in the Mishnah, uh, uh, whether you're allowed to do Hatmana from Yom Tov to Shabbos or not. But Shama doesn't allow you to do it, and Bezil allows you to do it. So what are we talking about? The Gemara says we don't know. If he has a Yerto Shilin, it should be Pasha, it's Mutter. If he doesn't have a Yerto Shilin, it's Pasha, it's us, or what's the Machlokas? So Rav gives a different explanation. Rav, I'm on the Olam Shaniyah. Really, he talked about where he left an Yerto Shilin uh, from Yom, before Yom Tov for Shabbos. For Shani Hatmana, the Mukham Milsa, the late to the Shabbos, like Ovid. Rav says Hatmana is worse. Even though normally you could do cooking and baking from uh, Yom Tov to Shabbos, uh, hatmana, insulating, you can't do, even if you insulated something from before Yom Tov for the purpose of your Erev Tav Shilin for Hatmana, you can't do it because it looks, the whole purpose of Hatmana looks like you're doing it for tomorrow. If I bake or cook on Yom Tov, so you could say I'm doing it for today, it's not, it doesn't specifically look like I'm cooking, like I'm cooking or baking for Shabbos. But if I do Hatmana, it looks specifically like I'm doing it for Shabbos, it'll be a problem. Midar <sighs> Uh, the Bryce says clearly that if he had Chamin, if he had hot water that he insulated from before Yom Tov, it's the purpose of Eretz Shilin to do what? To do insulation from Yom Tov to Shabbos, it would be good. The Bryce says clearly it would be good. The Afa Gab, the Mukham Mil, so that I did the Shabbos Gabin. Even though Atmana looks like you're doing it for Shabbos, as long as you didn't air the Shilin, it would work. Alam Rabbi, Abai gives a different explanation between Beit Shammai and Selah. You know, Eriv Lazev, but Eriv Lazev. He made an Eriv for, let's say, baking or for cooking. He left bread or a top shield, but he didn't make an Eriv for Atmana. The Chanani, he believed the Beit Shammai, it's Chanani's opinion according to Beit Shammai, that according to Chanani, Beit Shammai holds that they're Machmir and Eriv Tav Shilin, that if you want to do baking from you know, the shop is you have to actually leave a, a baked item. If you want to do cooking, one thing doesn't help for the other thing. According to Basil, not to, not according to Hananya, even one top shield or one baked item would work to help you cook and bake and insulate and light a candle, whatever you need to do. According to Hananya, each one has to be done in order to allow that type of of preparation. So you have to do atmanas. So if you just baked or cooked before Yom Tov, you didn't insulate before Yom Tov, you can't do atmana. According to Beit Shammai, from Yom Tov to Shabbos. The Mishnah says, Machlokas, whether you could pick up a candle which fell. My call, what's the problem? It's Yom Tov night. Yom Tov, you're allowed to light a candle. It's Mutter. Toshahutra, Havara, the Tsar, Huch, and Amish, the Lutzara. Amar of Hinna Barbisna, Achab Norisha, Hulius, Askina. The Mixi Kabona. It looks like you're building. We're talking about. A menorah, a candelabra, a candelabra that's made out of parts, and some of the parts uh, fell apart. It fell apart on the candelabra fell apart on Yom Tov. It looks like you're building, right? Only bone is really only when you stick something in where really tightly. But it's just talking about a, um, a candelabra which is loosely the pieces are loose, but it still looks like you're bone. You're building. According to they hold. At the milachas of binyan and stira apply to kalim utensils, movable objects. So therefore, it's mixed like a on this candelabra. We still hold, there's only binyan by houses and by the ground and by tents, then the binyan. But by kalim, there's no binyan, so there's no mixed like a And binyan and kalim, stira by kalim. Ulik, the rabbi of Yehuda. Ula came to the house of Yehuda. Kam shami zakafla l'shraga. He had a candle filled with oil, and the oil was running out, and it was leaning it was a little bit of oil. The wick was in a little bit of oil. He straightened out uh, the glass of oil, which was 
on the side, and therefore the wick no longer had any oil to burn from, and it extinguished. Um, if you put oil, extra oil, in a candle that's burning on Shabbos, if you take out oil, even though it doesn't go out right away, it's going to go out sooner, then you're So here also, he's mechabah because he extinguished the air. He's moving the wick to a place where there's less oil, and it's going to extinguish quicker. So it should be a problem. So he says, I'm not aware of what my servant does. They act by themselves. I can't be on top of them all the time. I'm a Rav, Rav Kanvashari. Rav says, you're allowed when you have a wick burning and part of the wick turns black because it got burnt, you're allowed to take off while it's burning the black part in order that it should burn better. It's not a problem. Need of racher. I like extinguish a candle in order to be together with your wife. Now, going to lachos of being together with your wife is that you're supposed to do it in a dark room. So let's say you have a candle in the room and you want to extinguish it on Yom Tov. Now, ochal nefesh is mutter on Yom Tov, and this we saw from the Mishnah on Daf Chafal from the is that a Maduro or water to, to warm up your body, to, to, to rinse off your body, that's considered ochal nefesh also, either because it's really ochal nefesh, because it's hana for your body, or because it's mitoch shehut shel otzar chut shenam shel otzar, you like to extinguish the candle, maybe also bia is a, is a hana, it's, a, it's an enjoyment, so maybe that should be allowed also, according to Beis Hillel. Amrlo Efshar Baisach, he says, you don't have to do it in that room, you can go to another room. Without the candle, in the bayis achem, let's see, has no other room to go to. If the mechitza, I can make a mechitza. I can make a, a partition uh, where the light of the candle won't see, be so visible. Even though it's a little visible, that's okay. But in the last mechitza, my he doesn't have anything to make a partition with. What should he do? If the so the is a clay, you can take a utensil and turn it on and put it on top of the candle, and you won't see the light. In the clay, my doesn't have a clay. What Amar Le Aser? He says it's Aser. To be together, the wife in these conditions. Now, the question is, we'll do even with Ben Zion a little bit. Dun, 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 dun. And where it says that is also Lashamish Mitaso, you can't be together with your wife during the day, which is where we derive that you can't be to, uh, together with your wife with her from the candlelight in front of the candlelight. So uh, but the Gemara says there's some Heterim that if you're a Talmud Chacham, you could Mapel Talisa, or if you're a Bais Afel, you're in a, a darkened room, it's okay also. So there are Heterim, I think a lot of posts can allow these days to be together as long as you uh, cover yourself. Uh, why can't you do that? So there's Asr over here. Hard to understand this Gemara, leaving it as a question. Uh, why does the Gemara say Talmud? The Gemara say we're not talking about Talmud Chacham. Why it's Afel, Afel, and basically it's dark. I don't know. <clears throat> Even with the candlelight, uh, I don't think it's that light in the room. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, it suggests over here that he says it's Usher. It's Usher. I don't know the answer. All right. Asive, a mechaben is a bakas kedilachos alei. You can't extinguish a piece of wood because you don't want the piece of wood. Let's say you have a two by four a piece of wood or something like that. Um, you don't want the piece of wood. You want to use it for your sukkah. You don't want it. You don't want it to be lit on fire on Yom Tov. You can't extinguish it because you want. You need it because you need it. Lachos alei. In order to save it, you can't extinguish it. Mishil shalayis ashen abayis. If it's the reason you're extinguishing it is that you don't want the house to smoke up or you don't want the, the, the top shield, the food that you're cooking in order to smoke up the house, mutter. you're allowed to. So you see over here that you're allowed to extinguish a fire in order for to prepare a hanas, a goof, to prepare a hana, to prepare a top shield, to prepare that your house should smell good. And so for a hanas, a goof, we see that you could to Kiboy. Amalea, he Rabbi Hudi, that's Rabbi Hudi, he, Kigamina, and Rabbana. That's Rabbi Hudi, Rabbi Hudi allows Machshiri Ochal Nefesh. Part of another, another Machlokas about Ochal Nefesh is things that you do to prepare for Ochal Nefesh. 
whether machshir like sharpening a knife in order to shecht an animal. Rabbi Yehuda allows you to sharpen the knife, and the Baron don't allow you to sharpen it. Only the actual malacha, which is take off lachit laochel to shecht it, so you're gonna eat it right away. To cook it, so you can eat it right away. That they allow you to do. They don't allow you to sharpen the knife. So here also, these things are machshir eochal nefesh that they prepare you for eochal nefesh, lighting, extinguishing a candle that you should be together with your wife. You do that. Uh, before you're together with your wife, it doesn't happen right away. Um, so it's machshir ochal nafesh. Yehuda allows it, and the brisa, which says that you're allowed to do that, is Rabbi Yehuda. That you're allowed to extinguish the fire that your house shouldn't smoke up. That's Rabbi Yehuda. We hold like the Rabbana, the machshir ochal nafesh is also. So the Gemara says, "Ba'omine uh, abay mirab, abay es rab, ma'ole chabos sadleika." Uh, you let it extinguish a fire, maybe um, where it's burning your house. Hey, if there's people in danger of dying, for sure you can extinguish it. Right? Shabbos is nitchis meneisah pikuach nefesh. Where everyone can get out of the house, but you're going to lose your property, you lose your house. It's going to go up in smoke, and you don't have home insurance. You see that if it's for uh, a hana, that you should, your house should smell good or you should have food to eat. So it's mutter. So similarly, even mom, that's going to make you feel good. You don't lose a lot of money. It should be mutter. I hear Rabbi Yehudi. That price is Rabbi Yehudi. I'm talking about the Rabbana, and they would say it's awesome. I hear Rabbi Yehudi. We're allowed to put medicine in your eye. On Yom Tov, we know on Yom Tov and Shabbos, you're not allowed to. There's a zero of using medicine because of tochen. You might grind up the medicine. Hey, Chadikas, I can go and rira dita dama the masa of kadachta of chilas ruch l'ami boily. That fill of Shabbos shari. We were talking about rira where your eyes are tearing or dita. It's a sharp pain or there's blood dama the masa. Again, there's a burning or sim kadachta burning pain or the masa uh, searing pain with chilas ruch l'a. At the beginning of this, the, the eye illness, so an eye is considered something which we're machalal Shabbos for because it's considered to be uh, an important aver. So any sickness of the eye, you're allowed to be machal Shabbos for. The self in it. We're talking about where the end of the disease, where it's basically recovered from it, is just to make you be able to see a little better. There's you know, no damage done to the eye. My, I'm really also He's also to do it on Yom Tov. So we see for a hanas mamon or hanas hana that you could could do it. We answered from that question, like we said, that's Rabbi Yehuda. We all did Shari, So he allowed you to use medicine in the eye as long as the guy applied it on Shabbos. He himself had a guy. He told the guy to use his medicine on his eye on Shabbos. I'm like Rashi. I'm like Where are you basing your reasoning from? He's not in danger of dying. Uh, whatever he needs can be done through a guy on Shabbos. Again, if it's not a sakana, you can even tell a guy to do it and he'll do it. You're over on doing malacha of tochem, doing medicine. Still mutter. That's only talking about where you're not a, aiding and assisting the goy. When you're taking this medicine in your eye, you're opening and closing your eye. You're helping him out. So it should be like a yid is doing it, like a Jew is doing it. Rav Zid holds like you with the question. And I had an answer from him. Someone who helps some, someone else do it on Malacha. But if the guy could could have done it by himself, he's Misayeya, he makes it easier, but it could have been done by the other person entirely. So that's not considered halakhali khashra. That's not important. And therefore, he's not really doing anything. Maymar allowed someone in order to to himself to put eye medicine in his on his eye on Yomto on the second day of Rosh Hashanah. If a uh, person died on Yom Tov Rishon, so then Goyim should bury the body. Yom Tov Shini is asked about Yisrael, if you live in Yom Tov Shor Rosh Hashanah, by Kovan Hamais, so then Yom Tov Shini, that even in Yisrael could bury him. Um, even Shnei Yom Tov Rosh Hashanah, which we normally consider Kedusha Achatz, a little more mekel, 
for a covenant on mace without a dip. Mashiach came at Beitzah when it comes to a not a covenant on mace. For a Beitzah, for example, an, an egg which is born on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, you can't eat on the second day of Rosh Hashanah. So here also, where there's not covenant on mace involved, you shouldn't be allowed to do it. The, the, the Jews shouldn't be allowed to do it on the second day of Rosh Hashanah. There's no more cool on the second day. It's Kedusha Achas. I'm only Anak and Aradai, so you're like, oh, like Aradai. We saw Aradai and Davov. The Amr Af and Beitzah, even by Beitzah, we apply this Kula uh, that, that Rosh Hashanah is like Yom Tov Shein Shal Goliath. It's like, not Shtei Kedusha. It's not Kedusha Achas. What's uh, the reasoning that you be Machmer? Dilma Mabr de Lael. Well, you're Choshesh that they're going to make Elul Mo'ober. In which case, Adam Kalman Amin Chalamala on the 30th day of Elul. And they'll make El and the Rosh Hashanah on the next day of Rosh Hashanah also. And be Shkdusha Acha. See, Amar Rav Chinna Barakana, I mean, what's Ezra Ve'elech, Mamatina, El Mo'ob. We never found, from Ezra, when the time of the second base of Mikdash, we never found after that, they actually made El Mo'ob. The Adam never came in a Mincha Lamala, so therefore it's not something we're worried about, and therefore it's really Shtei Kedusha, even Rosh Hashanah. Ve'en Ovin, Paitin, Grisin, El Rakikin. The Mishnah says that in the house of Rosh Hashanah and Leo, um, in the house of Rebbe Gamliel, uh, they wouldn't make fat breads, only wafers on Yom Tov, because it's a big effort. Tana Rabban Meisham, Yom Rebbe Oven Pas Ava Pesach. Gemara quotes a brisa and Mesachas Pesachim. Meisham says you can't uh, bake thick bread on Pesach. We tell him about Tiran. He tell allows you to do it. The Gemara assumes we're talking about a focus about whether it's going to come the chimutz or not. It's going to come chametz. Kampasava, how thick is the bread? Amar of Huna Tefa. The, the bread, the thickness of the bread is a tefa, you can't do it according to Beishame. She came out to the Lachamaponim Tefa. Lachamaponim, which also was not allowed to become Chametz. All we allowed is a tefa. More than a tefa is also. Master of Yosef, if you remember his reason, if we said Lachamaponim, where we're talking about people like Kohanim that are baking it, but they're very careful. Yom Bashanan's reason, you're going to allow up until a tefa. By, uh, by matzah, uh, on Pesach, Imam Rupas Hamela. If you say over there in based on Migdash, the, the bread was worked very well. A lot of people working on the bread, kneading the bread very well. Yom Rupas Sheina Mela. You're gonna say on Pesach, a regular Pesach, where the bread is not kneaded so well. You have one or two people, one or two women kneading the bread. Imam Rupas ate him, yevesh him by the base of Migdash, so all the wood was dry. So it burns much better. Yom Reisim Lachem. In a person's household setting, he has a lot of moist uh, uh, wood, which firewood, which is going to take longer to burn. It's going to be more than 18 minutes. Yom Rubaton Racham, Yom Rubaton Racham. And there in the base of Migdash, they always had things cooking in the oven. Here we're talking about a cold oven. It's going to cook slower. Yom Rubaton Racham Matachas. There in the base of Migdash, with a metal oven. Yom Rubaton Racham In people's houses, generally they had earthenware ovens. Amar of Yirmiya Barabba, Shailas Rabbi Biyuka. He asked Rabbi Bi privately, Manu, who is Rabbi? Rab. My Pasava, what does it mean Pasava? And he answered Pas Maruba. It doesn't mean thick bread. It means our mission was talking about making a lot of bread. And the reason is not because of Chimutz, is Brisa and Pesach, is because of Yom Tov. And Yom Tov, you can't do a Tircha Yisera. You can't do a lot of Tircha. Because the Amri Amar of Yirmiya Barabba, Amar Amar Rab, Shailas Rabbi Biyuka. He asked Rabbi Biyuka, Manu Amin Al-Kadosh, who is Rabbi? It's my pasava, pas maruba. He said the same thing. It's a lot of bread. My carly pasava. Why do they call it thick bread? It's called pas maruba. A lot of bread. Uh, because uh, there's a lot of kneading going on, so therefore they call it pasava. In Ami Ba'astri, the Haitana, pas maruba, pas abu karole. Or alternatively, you could say this, the author of this brisa, uh, making a lot of bread, they, they used to call it, the, colloquially, they used to call it thick bread. The reason is not because of chametz, it's because they're doing an extra tircho. My year Pesach, why does Bryce say Pesach? I think they were showing most Yom Tov Nami. Should apply also on Shavuos and Sukkot, Rosh Hashanah. In Achanami, really it's true. Vitana be Yom Tov the Pesach guy. Vitana happened to be talking about Yom Pesach, so I mentioned this. But really it applies to all Yom Tov. We have a Bryce like this. Beishami Yom Min Ofen Pas Maruba. Yom Tov, but you sell them the it says, explicitly it says on Yom Tov, Pas Maruba, uh, Beisham, doesn't allow it, but still allows it, they say, even though it's Tircha Yisera, we allow you to do it because of Ochel Nefesh. Then she says, Afu Omar Shlosh Dvarm Lahakel. We have three things from the house of Ramaliel that they were Mekel more than other people. Mechabdin, Beis Hamitos, they allow you to sweep, uh, the Arch is the dining room, Beis Hamitos, I would assume it's the bedroom. 
either way, normally you're not allowed to, supposed to sweep a floor which is made out of dirt because you're going to be mashave gumo, so you're going to smooth out the land and you're going to smooth out holes in the land and that's considered a form of binyan in your house. Uh, they made xero also on other floors, like tiled floors maybe. Uh, that doesn't mean Rabban on Yom Tov they allowed him to do it. Rabban Leah was making and allowed you to do it. Presumably because of the head of the Nefesh. Menichan has Samugur by Yom Tov. And you can light incense, smell incense, something that smells good. You light it on fire to make the house smell good. And they allowed also to roast a kid uh, with its uh, entrails, its, uh, its innards hanging outside on, on the line of Pesach on the night of Tedvav, Tedvav Nisan. They'll come and say it's also to do this because it looks like you're you're bringing kadshim bachutz outside the base of Megiddo. Just talking about after the base of Megiddo is destroyed. Amar Abasi, machlokis legamer. The machlokis, the second machlokis in the Mishnah, where he light a light incense on fire. And now he's talking about the machlokis between Rav Gamliel and whoever argued on him. Is talking about um, to use the incense to make your clothes smell better. To put, place the incense right up below your clothes in order that a good smell should go into your clothes. Avala Hariah, but if there's no clothes there just to make your house smell better, Divriya call mutter. That's because they're all nefesh. That's it or mutter. Macy ve machab the mason because we home to shall they shall be machab. We have a question in our Mishnah. Gamliel they used to sweep I'm gonna let the probably my hard bed and nasty akar abba I went after my father into the house they actually didn't do this on Yom Tov what they did was they swept on Erev Yom Tov and then they spread sheets on the floor in order they should come dirty on Yom Tov when the guests came they just took off the cloths from the floor and it was a clean floor I'm alone. Can't ask for Shabbos. Mutalasas can. He said, if you like, you're right. Elazar Ratzalik about this. Even on Shabbos, they'd be allowed to uh, do this to sweep before Shabbos and uncover the floors on Shabbos. So it must be your eyewitness testimony. Obviously, you saw this, but they also obviously, when it says in the mission, when Gamliel used to sweep them, they might have done this also. But they also at different times might have actually swept it. So your testimony might have happened, be true, but it's not conclusive. Um, another story, and they said they would. I don't know, it's other a lot of times I went after my father, a lot of times I went after my father, they actually didn't do this. Ellen Vina are disclosed shell bars out. It says this article censors of iron, meaning places where you held or you burn the incense, you place the incense in it and you place the fire underneath. They lit it on fire on Erev Yom. They would, on Erev Yom, they would stop the holes of the sensors that the smell shouldn't come out. Then they would open it up on Yom Tov when the guests came. And the house would smell good on Yom Tov. There's no need for you to, to, to tell me something about Yom Tov. Even Moshabas is Mutter. So it must be your your testimony you might have seen one time, but other times they might have done it on actually Yom Tov. So, El Itmar Hachi Itmar. If we want to make a qualifying statement about this, this is what you have to say. I'm Ravasi Machlokes Lahariya. Machlokes Bar Gamliel and the one who's Machmir is whether you're allowed to do it in order to have a good smell in the clothes. Uh, I'm sorry about Machlokes Lahariya in order to make the house smell good. But no, everyone agrees. You know, Gamliel would agree. In order to make a good smell in your clothes, that's also that's molded recha. Making a good smell, spraying perfume or spraying cologne on your clothes is also because it's like your masaki and the cleat. Stir up on it. It's also if I do maula ashin. Steaming explanation sounds like maula ashin had a smoke on yom tov. Arshkol and the rishonim say it's talking about something else. It's talking about <clears throat> you want to smoke fruits. You want to make them taste better. You want to put. Uh, Incense on top of off top of coals, and then you want to put the fruits on top of the incense in order to have a good smell on the fruits. Rav Yirmi Rav Amar Rav Aser Rav says Aser, but Shmuel Amar Mutter Shmuel says Mutter. Huna Amar Aser or he says Aser Meishu Mechabe, because when you put the incense on the coals, so you're extinguishing the coals a little bit. Amalei Rav Nachman the name of Mar Meishu Mavir. Also, what you're doing is first you put the incense on the coals 
you extinguish it. And then they light on fire afterwards, which is Mavir. I'm only also Machabe, but so for Mavir. That's what we meant to say. Originally, you're Machabe, and then you're Mavir. Amar of Yehuda, Al Gabi Gachel is also. Two on top of coals is also Al Gabi Cheres Mutter. But if you have earthenware, which is hot, then it's Mutter. Because there's no coals there, you're not Machabe. The Rav Amar Al Gabi Cheres Nami also, on top of Chavti Mumman Alf. Mishum de Kamoli Reicha. Because you're. Putting a good smell into the earthenware, or maybe into the fruits, um, and that is molid reicha. Like we said, it's masakin mana. It's like you're picking something in yom tov. It's aser. Also, have a good moed. See you tomorrow. Bye.